Alrighty then, in this video, the second video in the Web Scraping for Beginners tutorials, we are going to take a website that has a whole load of files that we would like to download and we're going to download every single one of them using Web Scraping. So, uh, here's the website, uh, this is just a whole load of podcast episodes, these are MP3s, um, but this will work for any particular file that you want to download. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, get this started first thing we'll do though is let's look at the the actual inner workings of the website so right click go to the inspect tab and let's just look at the html here now this looks very basic so we'll have a look and what can we see well we've got firstly we've got this first link here that we're going to want to ignore because it's not actually a link to uh, a file and if we have a look at the rest of the page the rest of the links do actually all appear to be uh, mp3 files so you can see that all that it really is is just a series of links uh, with breaks in between. That's the BR tag there. Um, they have a name, so we can use the text here to get to save the name of the file. And they've got a link to the file. The only thing we should notice here is that these links are relative. So when we get the string in between these quotes here, this, this link here, it's going to be... Um, only that string so we need to save the domain name as well so we can concatenate them together to get the full link uh, I'll show you what we mean by that uh, when we get to it um, so let's get started we'll save the uh, the page here and we'll, we'll go ahead and do it so uh, start with the imports from BS4 import beautiful beautiful soup as BS and we'll also import uh, requests there we go. Very first thing to just quickly do and get out of the way is to create the get soup method that we did in the last video. If you saw that, it's going to be very simple to do that. So uh, before we do that as well, we'll just quickly save some uh, some global variables for ease. So we're going to say this. We are going to say um, mm -hmm, just do that. We want to save the domain. We don't want the forward slash at the end of the domain because these strings have the slash at the start of them. So it wouldn't work. Uh, we probably also want to just save the file type um, so that we could also change this really easily. We could even have the user input what type of uh, file they want to get. Um, so let's create that get soup method. If you saw the last video, it's going to be pretty much exactly the same. So we're going to return BS, so uh, beautiful soup object. It's just BS there because I've imported beautiful soup as BS. Um, just because I, I don't want to type out beautiful soup every time, you know, say BS a hundred times and then say beautiful soup a hundred times and figure out how much time you save. Brilliant. So uh, go requests.get, pass the URL, go ahead and uh, run dot text because we only want the text part of the response uh, object that comes back from the request.get method. And we also want to pass in the HTML parser because we are going to be passing HTML other parsers are available that's actually true there are other parsers that you can use with beautiful soup but we're just going to use html parser it's nice and simple so what do we need to do next well we've got our soup object well the method to get it so let's iterate over what we get back so we'll say for link in get soup and we'll pass in that global url and we'll say find all and what do we want to find well we want to find all a tags we don't have to say oh what class they are because they're just there's no classes here it's just links so get all the links colon and we'll say uh, let's start the mp3 link and we'll say link dot get href like that and we'll say uh, if file type um, is in mp3 link then we will continue on and actually start getting them. So what we're doing there is we're just skipping over this link because we know that that is not going to have .mp3 in there. Um, also, if we were doing this for another website, we really only want to find the links that have um, the file type that we require. Um, there we are. So in fact, maybe we'll change this to file link. So it's just a little bit more clear if we were to change what file we were scraping. Maybe you're looking for a series of PDFs or something like that. Uh, let's go ahead and just print out the uh, file link just so we can see that it's all working correctly. So we'll uh, run the program. We'll say python.main 
and there we go it's just printed out all of the links and if we look at the top one we can see that it indeed has skipped that very first link that i was telling you about this one here so that's looks like it's working all of those appear to have mp3 in them so this is going to be pretty simple what do we need to do next well all we need to do next is to actually just download the file so we can say with open and what do we want to pass first well we want to pass the name of the file so if we look back to the inspect element we can see that we could just take the text from the link and use that as a name that would make most sense so let's do that so we'll say link dot text then we'll say wb um, that's for write bytes because we're going to be writing bytes here so it doesn't matter what file type we have here because it's all going to be treated the same then we want to say uh, we'll get the response object back from a new request so we're going to create a new request here and we're going to say um, we'll take that domain remember we're taking the domain here um, so we can add it onto this we concatenate them together so that the link actually makes sense because looking back over here what do we see well these links are actually meaningless if I was to put this into a web browser it wouldn't do anything and the same is true of Python here it wouldn't know what this link actually refers to so we need to say domain dot um, a plus should I say um, file link brilliant okay uh, and the next thing we need to do we just need to say file write response dot content there we go so once that's done we can run this program and hopefully it will work first try anyone who's a familiar viewer will know that nothing ever runs first try when i'm writing it but this one will and it is oh brilliant okay right so um that's downloading it now so we can see it's working on the first link remember the last time we did this it was instant because it just got everything from one page but now it's having to make another request and download a bigger file when it gets to the second one, I'm going to just do a control Z to stop that um, process. Do an LS to see what we've got. And look at that. We've actually got two files, although this one's incomplete. We have downloaded files. And if you wanted to run this for all of the files, you will just let it run until it finishes. So hopefully you found that interesting and useful. Uh, if you have any comments, please leave them below. I will uh, answer any questions you have down there as well. Uh, you know, leave a thumbs up on the video if you liked it and uh, subscribe for more videos in the future. Thank you very much.